recognition of Eastern Caribbean states, or OECS, not OECD, we're not that rich. But we are a grouping of 11 islands. Six of them are independent islands, and three of them are British territories, overseas territories, and two of them are French territories, Martinique and Guadeloupe. So, 11 countries. As islands, the sea is part of our history, our culture, our people came from across the sea. We used to produce sugar and cotton and everything which we had to export and so on. So our, our way of life, our fishermen and our fisher folk were, 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 had to work along the coastline to catch, to go out of sea. Also, most of our settlements, our, our cities, our towns, our villages, the largest ones are along the coast. And that has been our way of life for the last couple of hundred years. And of course, with tourism over the last 50 to 60 years, our hotels are on the sea. So every, our economy, our roads, our bridges, they are mainly along the coast, right? But climate change now comes along. And what happens? Sea level rise. Sea level rise is a major issue for us in many ways. I was in Martinique about three weeks ago, and we visited a beach where the beach had been eroded by 25 meters since 1961. Okay? 25 meters since 1961. Due to the sea level rise. But that's not all. It's not just the erosion. It is the salt surge. Because sea level is rising and because we have hurricanes, the cyclone, they affect us severely. They are becoming more intense. And so the storm surge, we have hurricanes sometimes where the, 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 the water comes from the sea and floods the village or the town. In fact, in one, and if we have heavy rainfall as well, so you have that rain coming down. So in one case, we had the, we had the waters rise to about four meters. And people had to be rescued from their houses in boats. OK? And that's on the coastal villages. So it's a serious issue for us. Also, we have, so we also have what in some islands where they, they use brown water, there is so what you call seawater intrusion going into the wells. So the quality of the water is, is not as good as it used to be. It's also affecting coastal agriculture. The farms that were along along the coast where you have salt water going up, up inland. So these are just some of the factors along the coast. And the sea, because of the storm, sea level rise, coastal erosion, our mangrove swamps, have, some of them are being destroyed. Our coral reefs are being submerged. We, and in addition to that, if sea level rise was not enough, because of the higher temperatures, and also because of storms, we're getting increased, we're getting our, our, our coral reefs are being bleached, and so on. So, St. Lucia, for example, again, where I'm from, we were, some years ago, we were in the the top 10 dive destinations in the world for scuba diving. In 2005, we had a, a bleaching event where the, the temperatures of the water were so high that our, our reefs bleached, they turned white, and they never fully recovered. So we're no longer in the top 10 dive destinations in the world for a simple thing like right? Now, so our, our tourism has been affected because our beaches are eroded. So, you know, in, you know, in your lifetime, I. There are places I used to walk along the beach. The trees are in the sea now, but they're gone. They've been washed away. You know, the beaches where you used to walk on sand, now, now pebbles or stones. The whole thing has changed. Okay, so that is what, what climate change is, is doing for us. And if, in some cases, we are concerned that we've been losing our, some of our fisheries permanently, and that is an issue that falls in the realm of loss and damage, which I think we're negotiating right now. Okay, at, at COP. So, so this is what the, the situation is. So what are we doing about it? For one thing, we have in the Eastern Caribbean an Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy, which tries to set, set the policy environment for us to address climate change, well, for ocean issues generally. We are also now looking at, we also begun to look at the, the blue economy in a broader sense, trying to, you know, to, to, um, to see what opportunities we can get and to try to maximize the, 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 the potential of our, our oceans in a sustainable way. We are also trying to do some nature-based solutions. For example, we've done some coral reef replant, some, um, some coral reef gardening 
re to replant or re you know repopulate the coral reef. We've also tried to to um to replant some of our mangroves and also to also to try to reduce some of the pressures on land that are causing problems like deforestation, siltation, etc. We what we also another thing we try to do is to take some engineering solutions. For example, where your beach is more is being lost too rapidly, we try to take we try to build build sea defenses. So that is fine. But it's not as simple as that because in some areas the sea level and the rise is happening too fast and the coastal erosion is happening too fast for you to plant mangroves or even to try to, to do coral restoration. It's not practical, so you have to look at costly engineering solutions. In some circumstances, the hotels, for example, uh, you have people taking engineering solutions on their own. So somebody decides to put a, a beach structure, uh, a structure to protect their beach, but it's affecting the person at the at down, lower down, so that person doesn't get sand for their beach. And so there is, there is not yet an overall master plan in most of the islands to see how best to do the engineering. And the engineering is very, very expensive. Okay? So that is a challenge. So climate change is happening faster than, than, than we anticipated originally. And I, I know my dear friend tells me, said, everybody talks about 1.5. I personally think that 1.5 is too much, way too much. Because at 1.1, 1.2 degrees, this is what we are seeing. I don't do it for 1.5. Okay, I think we know we really need to stop this and try to halt it now. Of course, we recognize that the, the pressures will continue for a long time. And I, I also want to say that the finance that we need to do things, because we're doing, I forgot to mention, we're doing things like cultivation of, of sea you know, which is a way of an alternative way of, of revenue generation for our fishermen. We have a problem with Sargassum now, which is the Sargassum is a seaweed that is flooding the entire Caribbean. You, some of the fishermen cannot do the sea because there's so much sargassum. And, well, some people are trying to make fertilizer. So there's just so much. We can't, you know, so we need, we've been talking about climate finance for a long time now. So there's a movie in which one of the lines is, show me the money. That is very important. We can't keep talking climate finance. We, we need to walk the walk and just talk the talk. Now, Bob Marley, the famous reggae singer, had a, a line in his in one of his songs. So much things to say. I can say so much more, but I'll stop now. Thank you. Thank you.